No, go ahead. Oh, wait. Say that again. This is a nice little setup you have here. You look amazing. If you could get a, a little bit or or put this one, you know, more like right on top of him. There you go. And that way when you you can cut to him. What and, I'm starting to look like is old. Now, you know, uh, that's that's the only knock on uh, on Shriner's Santa is that he looks too young. But right. I, I think you look perfect. Yeah, but he, but Santa is no. immortal, you know. So I mean, he's <laughs> supposed to be kind of well, this cross between old and young. To no? be honest, we are Santa. We can all be Santa. <laughs> we are Santa, like we are Negan. <laughs> <laughs> A Walking Dead reference for those of you yeah, that are, no, are not I laughing. Cut, I cut out before Negan made his appearance. I didn't make oh. it that far. Oh, well, you got to get back in, man. We. So you didn't even it's, know you were making that reference. It's, no, I knew what it was. No, oh, okay. there, there are other things. There are others. There, there's lots of references in literature where we are. Oh, okay. All right. You know, well, like well, for I, example, long said, before Negan, there was we are the Borg. Okay, you win. And there's I, also been the whole concept that anybody can be Santa. Well, how has Santa's season been treating you this year? Interesting this year. Because this is the hashtag me too uh, era. So this, uh. so you have wo- woman after woman coming up sitting on your lap too. And Ordin- you just- ordinarily, yes. But I, I, I've been doing office parties and things like that too. Right. In the past, it's all been like, hey, I want my turn on Santa's lap. I want my, and, it, and it's not a big deal, but you know, there are some that get a little too friendly. Then there are those that whisper, hey, I've been naughty all year, Santa, and stuff like that. Oh, so some ladies, some strangers will sit on your lap. And, yeah, well, it's an and, office party situation or a setting where I'm obviously there to take pictures. It's obviously okay. Some of them get a little flirtatious. This year, for the first time ever, about half of them would like go to sit down, then they check themselves and go, is it okay? Are you sure? I can sit on your lap. Wow. Even I'm even getting that this year. Ordinarily, it's like, you know, you're a guy, deal with it. Um, that's funny that the, the no, I thought it was great. Well, well, that, it's interesting that the women have that in their head too, right? Is that you know I didn't I was getting ready to tell a, a story here um, coming off the weekend because one of the stories that we're talking about is uh, with what's going on is it going to make uh, men wary of women at work? Oh, everywhere they won't they won't want to be alone in a meeting one on one in right. an office situation anymore. Well, the, the over the weekend I'm doing a race out at a Coachman Park where uh, you know the announcer, the race announcer. And I see one of my friends that's, uh, you know, help putting on the race. Her name is Beth, uh, the girlfriend of a, one of my best friends. And uh, I go up and I give her, a, you know, hey, how you doing? I give her a hug and, a, you know, kiss. And, she gave me a hug, too, and a kiss in the cheek. And if, like in that moment, I'm going, uh, should I have asked first? I'm not even kidding. And this is somebody that I've known for years. Right. We're really good friends. This shouldn't be something that even enters my head. And I'm going. Uh, have I been accidentally making this person feel uncomfortable ever since I've known him? Have I been making everybody feel uncomfortable ever since I know them? I was watching a, an old SNL bit about uh, it was a shwe- the sweaty balls bit with Alec Baldwin, uh, and I'm like, are we supposed to laugh at that humor anymore from either side because it's now inappropriate? I would we say have that conversation. Do our movies, television is are they exempt? from following the same rules we have to in real life when what they're doing is set an example. I, Here it is, Santa's talking about sexual, <laughs> sexual, sexual harassment. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Johnny brought this up. He brought up, he goes, I got an idea. He brought up the other day, and I go, it's funny because Schreiner and I had a similar idea because he was like, you know, we had the dogs in here. And he's like, you know, oh, so you wanted to, what, what was it? Pup, puppies and puppies, racism? Yeah. Pu- well, yeah. <laughs> it's like you do the horrible news, but with the puppies. So it kind of bounces it's out. So I'm like, bad, yeah. like, it's funny you say that because Schreiner and I, before I got canned. Uh, by the way, did I tell you I got paid? We're you all did, settled you, up? You, uh, yes, you did. We're tell all me settled you, up. You, you, got, you told me you got paid. You told me how you got paid. <laughs> I, yeah. I turned no, my wife don't, on Don't them. get into it. Yeah. yeah I turned my wife on him. <laughs> She's much more effective. Whew. Yes, yeah, she nice. is. I like when it's pointed at others. I don't like when that's pointed at me. <laughs> um, but uh, so when Shriner and I were over at AM 820, we, we, you know, it was just, it seemed like just the news every day was just, it was either a shooting, right. there were mass shooting we're talking about, or, uh, you know, some, what, whatever, just, just horrible, just stuff. horrible stuff happening. Racism constantly. And uh, he's like, man, you know, maybe we should, because we had this uh, thing with the Pet Pal Animal Shelter, maybe we should just go down there and they lock us in a room, one of their rooms that they have there, bring in, you know, five or six dogs, puppies, and we'll sit there and talk about the most horrible things in the world while puppies are crawling all over right. us and hopefully yeah. balance that whole thing out. Title the segment, Puppies and Racism. But instead, <laughs> yeah. but instead, we bring in Santa Claus. We yes. bring in Santa Claus that we can, we can talk about the uh, horrible stuff of the day. Hey, so how's everything going? Do you do you miss the show? Do you miss being on Are the radio? Kidding? Absolutely. 
I mean, I'm still kind of on radio. Occ- you, occasionally, I get to fill in for Eric Casillas. Are you doing news at all? Yeah. Okay, That's so you're still it. doing news there. Yeah. All right. And uh, um, so this, I, I see the beard is nice and trimmed. You don't have it. At, it, it's, it can be bigger. It can be fuller. Oh, yeah, it could be. But it's it, it, for me, it starts to split in the wind when I'm riding in the sleigh any longer than this, and I get that. <laughs> That's funny. See, How's it's all right there. How's now, this? do you have to get like pretty obsessive about like putting like oils in it and things like I do. that? I do for the health of my skin and the health of the beard, and it seems to maintain it a whole lot better. I've kind of learned that over the years. I've also learned that the really good beard oils cost like $20 an ounce. Oof. Right. Yeah, it's expensive. So I make my own, which, by the way, I should nice. probably sell my own, too. He does. Well, go t- walk him through the process. It's not hard. You go out and buy your carrier oils. I use a little vitamin E. You can use sweet almond or jojoba oils. And they have really have very little scent at all. They're just a carrier. Then you add your essential oils. So uh, bergamot's a good one that uh, you know some people I know like. Uh, around the holidays, I could use peppermint. Uh, but one of the ones I use all year round has leather, musk, vanilla, and nutmeg in it. See, that sounds like such a Santa Claus recipe to me. <laughs> <laughs> like he's talking about peppermint and leather. And, right. <laughs> I mean, well, the, here's my holiday blend that I'm working on. I'm trying to uh, perfect this one. Would be a carrier oil. Then peppermint and hand sanitizer, because children oh. children come at you. Man. Oh yeah! Two years ago, I was sick for five months after Christmas. I got sick the day after. Well, they all want to touch the beard. Well, it's you know some of the I do a lot of charity work, and some of the kids that might be the only thing that they have. That might be their only uh, pageant that they go to. Santa reading stories, get your picture taken, maybe a present at the event. And that's it. So they don't they don't want to miss out, and their parents don't want them to miss out. So. I couldn't do Santa. I couldn't do oh, Santa just us. because of the the. And I I love children, but the the stuff that comes out of their face, their nose. Oh, you see it. They're literally dripping oh, with it when they come uh. at you, and you've got to let them give you the hug because yeah. you know you're Santa. You know, and they they believe, and you want them to have that little piece of magic. What are the kids my, asking? That's why I'm putting hand sanitizer in my beard this time of year. Yesterday. A harsh. Yesterday, you know, I was running some errands, end up, you know, getting to the house while my daughter's at the playground. Sure enough, as I go to the playground to meet her, I mean, her nose is just like dripping. I mean, she's just got all kinds of stuff coming out of her nose. <laughs> Luckily, I had some tissues on me, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and when you're with your parent, too, you probably, there's probably times you just reach in there with your hand, just, you know, oh, you don't yeah. have any tissues, wipe it down exactly. your jeans and move on. You just got to get rid of it. But when it's not your kid, that's a whole different ball game. All right. Oh, we got the Shriner stop by, and I know that you only uh, uh, can come by for a couple minutes yesterday. Yeah, and it's kind of weird because half the time I'm in, like, Disney rules. If you're in costume, you're in character. Right. So it's weird when people call me Shriner. I'm sorry, Santa. That's right. Should we do that or not? It doesn't really matter. I mean, where's this a unique relationship? Uh, I, I, I think it's it's Santa it is. You know, if you're in character, you're in character. Um, but uh, uh, I, we were talking a little bit earlier about uh, the – uh, the the climate that we're in, right? It's changed, and I had, was before you were going into these office parties, and you knew what was going. You know, you knew that there would be adult women that want to sit on your especially lap, especially with an open bar, and it, it's it, most of it's perfectly innocent, everything you want it to be, everything it should be. Sometimes a little bit later, some of them would get a little familiar, a little cuddly. Maybe whisper a few things they probably wouldn't if they were sober. That kind of thing happened. This year, completely different. There, there was, you know, obviously a lot of picture taking, but there was, when it came time to sitting on the lap, most of it was done standing up, walking around, by the way. But when it was sitting in the chair, half of them were like, are you sure it's okay? Can I sit on your lap? And no one has ever asked me that before. That is, it's just, it's just a weird time that we uh, live in. Even for Santa Claus, it's a weird it time. It has changed for Santa. How's Mrs. Claus taking it? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Claus is always very possessive. <laughs> uh, you do a lot of stuff this time of year, obviously. You'll do in uh, corporate events and stuff like that. But you do a lot of charity, too. I do. Uh, matter of fact, uh, a little bit later this morning, I'll be stopping by Orlando's Toy Drive for Wild 94.1. They do it with the children's home, which, by the way, whenever you see, because I've get to see some of the background stuff you you get to occasionally too with some of these charities like the children's home or toys for tots or ronald mcdonald house when they're asking for toys for kids they really do mean it and they really do need it and some of those stories will break your heart uh the children's home uh i haven't met the kids yet this year but some of the ones they brought out last year when little kids who should still be believing in santa claus believing in me and they go, you're not real. I know how the world works. Nobody cares about me. Like and this old? is like an eight-year-old. Oh. 
who says that nobody is heartbreaking right who that who believe who instead of believing in something like the magic of christmas believes that nobody cares about them and then you know we start by you know trying to point out that look at all these people that are here you see how many toys that are coming in the truckloads that are backing up the people that are working the awareness that's going on on the radio every one of these people care about you and they're trying and then when you hear them break a little and go Okay, maybe I'll give you that. But at eight years old, but then what happens you look come at Christmas some, and there's nothing there for him again? Well, for it all or depends. Hopefully, there hopefully, is hopefully they've been they found a, a forever home by then. Uh, the Children's Home, which is I believe Tampa Bay's longest running charity, uh, has so many different areas where they they were able to take children in, and their need is so great. And it's not just little kids. You, know, you remember, older kids don't get adopted. Uh, it's harder to do that a placement because everybody wants the cute little kid. Uh, and the older kids need attention too. Yeah, that's need, you don't want the, things, those stinky, sweaty, uh, you know, teenagers. Teenagers, right? <laughs> they, they have needs too, and they want people. They want to know whether they'll admit it or not that people care about them. Yeah. So these organizations are amazing, and if you can give just a little bit of your time, even when the volunteer call goes out, that's great. Well, Santa, I know that you have somewhere else to be this morning, but if you don't mind, what Santa I, has business meetings. Santa has some uh, business to handle. Uh, but if you don't mind to, to help our listeners, because most of our listeners watch with their little children with them. Absolutely. And I would like to uh, give you some of the headlines of the day. And then if you could, as Santa, explain to a six year old the headline, you know, what, the, you know, <clears throat> Santa, no, the news, knowing him, this could be very interesting. What headlines just, just you choose? Simple headlines of the day. OK. All right. Final push for Moore and Jones in Alabama Senate race. Alabama Democrats see Tuesday's special Senate election as a chance to renounce a history littered with politicians whose race-baiting, bombast, and other baggage have long soiled the state's reputation beyond its borders. Many Republicans see the vote as a chance to ratify their conservative values and protect President Donald Trump's agenda of the 2018 midterm elections. And you want me to explain this to a child? Santa, to, to a six-year-old. To the camera. <sighs> Can you and, start with a ho-ho-ho? <laughs> Until about three months ago, no one had heard of Roy Moore outside of Alabama. Allegations came out. People started looking into his history. Santa, what's an allegation? People are telling stories of his past that are difficult to substantiate. What's substantiate? Verify the truth. (laughs) (laughs) Even Santa doesn't know what to think of Roy Moore. Is Roy Moore going to get coal or is he going to get a present? Oh, he's getting coal. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Next up, Santa. Uh, Bitcoin futures rise as virtual currency hits major exchange. Oh, if only only I had invested in Bitcoin. (laughs) (laughs) Explain to the kids uh, cryptocurrency. Okay, cryptocurrency uh, is still something that is, it's a phantom and a myth of money that doesn't exist, but we believe in it like we believe in paper money. I believe (laughs) I believe it like I believe in it like I believe in Santa. Right. Well, there's value to it. Uh, you have to remember about eight to ten years ago, I think when it first came out of the market, even Domino's or some pizza places got involved. You could use Bitcoin to buy a pizza, and now those two bitcoins or whatever you spent on a pizza would be enough to retire on. Very good, very good. I think uh, the children can understand that. The value has increased in bitcoins. If your parents didn't get in on it, you still need to work hard and get good grades to go to college. All right. Uh, next up, <clears throat> Santa, can you help uh, please please explain what's going on in the Middle East as a Texas imam calls for Israel's destruction in Arabic uh, following President Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital? You want me to resolve an issue that has been going on for thousands of years? If anybody and can even do it, Santa. The, the best minds in the world, they aren't very yeah. big fans of mine over there. You don't need to resolve anything. You just need to explain to the uh, kids what is uh, If happen- I could explain it, we could solve it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. It's that difficult and complicated, and everybody has their own agenda and opinion of what's right over there. Okay. And then uh, lastly, this is a very sensitive one for uh, Santa Claus. Uh, we're going to come. more Bitcoins in Israel and Palestine was insensitive. <laughs> We're going to come back to, we're going to come back to, we have the video for this story. Actually, you know what? Let me go ahead, because you do have a couple minutes. Let me just go, go ahead and pull this one up then. Yeah, my next meeting is only like six minutes from here. Okay, so we'll pull this up. And this is a video that went viral, and then you had uh, athletes um, and other, you know, it's just one of those things where they rallied behind them and said, hey, the next time you're coming to a football game with me, I think somebody from the Tennessee Titans, uh, an artist came to town and said, you're going to come to my show, but uh, check this out, Santa. 
boy. What? What's the point of it? Why do you find joy in taking innocent people and finding a way to be mean to them? It's not okay. What do they say to you? They call me. They make fun of my nose. They call me ugly. They say I have no friends. What'd they do to you at lunch? Put milk on me and put ham down my clothes. Threw bread at me. Is it just you? Yep. Or is it other kids too that feel that way? Say it's other kids too. How's that make you feel? I don't like that they do it to me and I for sure don't like that they do it to other people because it's not okay. People that are different don't need to be criticized about it because it's not their fault. But if you are made fun of, just don't don't let it bother you. Stay strong, I guess. It's hard. But it'll probably get better one day. So. <laughs> I had a hard time hearing some of that. So basically he was being... Bullied at for the way he for the way he looks. Yeah, for the way he looks at school. You can see the tears just dripping off. Yep, and uh, and so like I said, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm tear. I, do I tear up every day on the show, John? We should uh, have to say this. Uh, I've that's been against. watching. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I'm, a sensitive, I'm a snowflake, man. I'm a sensitive guy. We should just guy. start. We should just start noting at what time, <laughs> and and just keeping track of that. Make, How far into the show does it take to make Chris cry? <laughs> that's right. We'll do. We'll uh, we'll take bets in the well, comment look, section every morning. Over you know, under. The, I was I was talking about this because there was a sh uh, story that came out last week about a young girl. I think she was about uh, uh, 13 years old who hung herself uh, from bullying that was taking place at her school. Uh, and and we've talked about it a little bit here on this show. But you know, in talking with uh, some of my friends, I mean, look, I got I remember getting jumped by four or five kids in the, in the school bathroom. I mean, I went to a, a school in a rough part of town, and I, where I was like the token white kid you know like to me they didn't care that i was hispanic like to me i was white and so that that gave them a motivation to jump me for whatever reason and so i had my first black eye when i was three years old Jeez. and so i feel for this kid because i know exactly what he's going through and the problem is is that how do you solve it right like how do you make it stop and and so yeah it's growing pains and it made me stronger and, uh, and it made me the, the man I am today. But wait, wait, wait. No, that is that is a somebody who's been abused. That's the way your brain tricks itself. So you're not sitting there in that moment for the rest of your life. Right. Uh, the same. Uh, our good friend Jesse Cage has a similar story of uh, walking by the bus when he was hitting puberty, puberty and he got fat. And every kid was, you know, leaning out out of the bus going something like ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, you know, with every step or one of those kinds of things making fun of him. And while he's telling, when he tells that story, I, my blood starts to boil, and in my head, I'm blowing up the bus. Yeah. And uh, he goes, "No, it it, uh, it made me, you know, who I am today. If it wasn't for that shaming, then I wouldn't have uh, lost weight." And I go, "I go, buddy, that's 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 what victims do in their head uh, to to reconcile with their the, another part of their brain, so that they don't blow up the well, bus." Well, everybody later handles on. it differently, right? And so it didn't change me, but it made me more a more confident person. Um, but you're right. Getting I mean, punched in the eye at three years old? Look, I mean... It, so you're going to punch your little girl at three years old just to <laughs> give her more confidence? No, but that's exactly why that the story of the girl out in California hit me so hard because, you know, my little girl's only two, you know, but in 10 years or even less than that, is she going to be dealing with this sort of thing? And I, am I going to be able to have the awareness to catch it? And then B, what am I going to be able to do about it? All right, we're going to turn it over to Santa to answer this question here in a moment. But I do want to fill in some of the blanks in this uh, story here right. uh, because this video that we just played had more than 18 million views as of yesterday. Uh, crowdsourcing page was already put up. There was, uh, uh, as of yesterday, $30,000 in there for his uh, uh, college fund uh, for later on in life. Sorry, I'm tearing up again. Listen, if, if, and if they're <clears throat> smart and they put that money in a prepaid plan right now, that it's one of the ones that are available, they can knock out most of his tuition, if not all of it, with that. Santa's also a financial planner, if you need. No, I am not. <laughs> on Twitter. I'm the one who gives out free toys every year. <laughs> yeah. I, I operate in the red always. <laughs> it's a horrible business model. On Twitter, uh, Tennessee Titans tied in uh, Delany Walker, 
um, or Delaney Walker, invited the Jones family to an upcoming game, while University of Tennessee wide receiver Tyler Bird said he and several teammates planned to visit him at the school, which we've seen this a few times now, where right. athletes are showing up, these humongous football players or basketball players, whatever, are showing up to just kind of hang out with the kid that's being bullied. I love this. There was a story of, a, uh, I think, of a, a child who was autistic who was getting bullied for the same thing, and yep. some football players sat up, showed up and had lunch with him. Country music star Kelsey Ballerini tweeted that the next time she comes to her home native of Knoxville, she wants to be with Keaton to witness the bullies apologize. I want to be there by your side to watch these efforts apologize to you. And then retired race car driver Dale Jr. Uh, said on Twitter, he wants Keaton to add me to your long list of friends. Snoop Dogg on Instagram said he has a friend for life and that love is the only way to beat hate. Just be careful. Snoop gives very interesting presents that can get you arrested in airports. <laughs> <laughs> so Although, Santa. to his credit, he does have an entire gang behind him that I'm sure would be willing to step in and resolve this situation if need be. <laughs> All right. Bullying is nope. going to be a tough thing to solve. Oh, uh, Santa. Type because I, because it, it, it's not just the kids. It's the parents. I see parents bullying other parents. I see parents bullying children. Parents bullying each other. So it's, well, I meant, you know, family to family. But yeah, within families, it's probably even worse in a lot of cases. Uh, so Santa. Yes. You're at the mall. Mm -hmm. An adorable little seven-year-old sits in your lap. And you say, what do you want? And she goes, I want to stop being bullied. What do you say? <laughs> no, you think, you think that's a question I'm not prepared for. Yeah, and you're kind of right. But well, yeah, you're, you can only be so prepared for it. You can only be so prepared for it, but you have to be because you get those questions. You also get questions like, I just want my dad back or something like that. Uh, and those questions do happen. Uh, and you can mumble a few platitudes about life. Santa, what's a platitude? <laughs> I'm glad that you haven't caught me on camera doing that yet, because people, they were just weird. They were, what? Just, that was fish? That just ruins that, the whole yeah, bit. That's, fish, that was, that's <laughs> Fish's little little kid voice. No, that's, that's Roxy's voice. That's Roxy McPoopenstein's voice. Oh, that's voice. right. That's Roxy's right. voice. Uh, it's, it's a tough question to answer, because there really is no answer, because it, not from Santa. Nothing I can say is going to fix it or solve it or make them feel any better. And I never did like the whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger thing, because it's that's not necessarily true. That's only true for those that survive or rise above it. There are plenty of people that never do. There are people that battle with depression all the time uh, that never outgrow it. I saw a story yesterday. They're talking about diagnosing children at the age of three Jeez. with depression. And at first I was like, eh. You can't do that, right? right? But then my second thought was, we don't know ourselves, the physiology of the human body, the psychology of the human brain yet. So I've got to keep my mind open towards the possibility. And maybe there are markers at three years old that are that are going to that show you that you will be somebody battling depression the rest of your life. Sometimes the depression is influenced from events, and sometimes it's something about the way you're wired. Either way, you're going to need the tools to deal with it, and that's not something that Santa can give you. That's something that your parents and family and friends and sometimes trained professionals uh need to give you the tools, learn how to have the language, learn how to work with it. But it's something you're going to carry with you. Well, Santa, not, Santa was bullied. Santa was bullied? Santa was, I had big ears as a kid. I was bullied. Really? I got jumped once. They were carrying me out. By your ears? No, I jumped by, by the ears. No, they had me by the arms and legs and were carrying me out. To, uh, whether they were going to beat me up, I don't know. So what, this you, was at a nice Catholic school. So, Santa, speaking of bullying, all right, so how did you handle the Rudolph situation? I mean, a lot of bullying happening there uh, under your supervision. How did you handle that? Well, as you know, Rudolph became a hero. Rudolph had a special talent that put him at the lead of the team. And, of course, when you're in front, everybody else has to look at your – for their whole ride. <laughs> And also, don't forget, early on when it came, Rudolph was made fun of because of his bright red nose. Right. He was made fun and of. For his difference. And for his difference is what made him special. Later on in life. So mm -hmm. remember that, too. Yeah, that little boy in the video you showed me, and they, he said he was being bullied for being ugly. Man, what kid do you know that looks like today that he looks like he did when he was little? The whole ugly duckling thing is true more often than not. Not always, but... <sighs> Quite often. All right. Well, let's not end on a you know a down note at all, a sour note at all. So, what's on the slate for the rest of the year until you have to uh, start delivering presents on the twenty fifth? Uh, children's Home Drive uh, here in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, let's see what else. There's going to be uh, Clearwater Ice Arena on Saturday. I'll be out there for their public skate session. You can skate with Santa. Um, I'm and doing. Is your, ch is your church oh, done? Uh, my church is doing. We do Christmas is near. 
We don't do a Chris. We don't do a Christmas service. Who wants to get out and you know put on church clothes? You got a tree and a, maybe your family and food in the kitchen. Who wants to go to church on Christmas morning? Let's be honest. It's the only time I go. Yeah. Who really? But who, do you really want to? You feel guilty. It's the only time you go. Do you really want to go to church? I don't or, go because. Or would you rather stay in your pajamas and hang out with family and your dogs? I go if I'm with my mother and she's going. Then All I'm right, going. But what her. if you could go two days before Christmas and it doesn't interfere with Christmas Eve or Christmas Day? And you can still check it off your list. Christmas is near. December 23rd, we're going to be at... Uh, Curtis? That water? No, they moved it this year. Okay. Oh, you know that the park over by Uleli? Waterworks Park? No. Uh, it's right on the Hillsborough River. Go to Christmas well, is I'm near. I'm a Pinellas guy. Christmasisnear.com. And uh, we're going to be out there starting... I think we're going to start with the face painting and the Santa photos and everything around 4 o'clock. We're going to have a 7 o'clock non-denominational Christmas service. Our pastor will speak, and he's uh, really engaging and a lot of fun. Great music all night long on the on the stage as well. And then, you know, you have a good night and go home. Well, Santa- it's Christmas is near. We're having our, our Christmas service. We do it every year on December 23rd, which this year falls on a Saturday, which is great. Well, Santa, thank you so much for coming by the show no, today. Thanks for having me on. Fish. I miss you.